The video was prepared especially for the Caucasian channel. Greetings, friends! Today I want to continue the topic of interesting circuits on discrete logic and make a simple signal level indicator. We'll go over the circuit, assemble it, and test it. In general, you can come up with many variations of signal level indicator circuits using discrete logic. We looked at one of the approaches in another video, where each logic element is used as a comparator set to trigger at a logic high level. By using a Schmidt trigger chip, you can get up to six outputs from a single chip. The complexity of this approach lies in the individual adjustment of each resistive divider. In today's video, I propose to consider the following circuit. It is built on the basis of a clock generator, a 16 counter, and a decoder. The circuit also includes an operational amplifier. Let's break down the circuit into parts and understand how it works. First, the clock generator. It can be built using any basic logic elements with inversion at the output, meaning simply inverters on the K155LN1 chip, and not, that is, K155LA3, or not, K155LE5. Well, you got the idea. To measure the frequency of the generator, it is necessary to vary the capacitance of the capacitor. I explained how such a generator works in another video. I'll also leave a link to it in the description. After generating the clock signal, we feed it to the K155IE5 counter, which counts up to 16 in an endless loop. The signals from the outputs of the counter are fed to the ID3 decoder, which outputs a logical zero, only on the output whose digital code was received at its input. Thus, in an endless loop, the circuit cycles through all the outputs of the decoder. Next, we place this kind of resistive divider on the outputs of the K155IE5 counter. The resistance of the upper arm is selected so that each is twice as large as the previous one. This results in approximately 1, 2, 4, and 8 kilo ohms. This is the simplest DAC with a matrix of binary weighted resistors. If we look at the signal at this point, we will see a sawtooth waveform. This sawtooth signal is fed to the positive input of the operational amplifier, and the voltage on it is compared with the voltage on the negative input. If the voltage on the positive input is less than on the negative input, then the output is a logical zero. The base of the transistor is grounded, and it turns on, allowing the supply voltage to pass through the current limiting resistor to the row of LEDs. And the LEDs will start lighting up one by one. However, with each cycle, the voltage on the positive input will increase, and when it becomes greater than on the negative input of the operational amplifier, a logical one will appear at the output, the transistor will turn off and all the LEDs will go out. You might say, what nonsense! Something is blinking here, but we need them to stay lit, and here, the inertia of our vision comes to our aid. We reduce the capacitance in the generator and achieve the effect where we stop seeing the LEDs turn on one by one and start seeing them simply stay lit. Beautiful! It turns out that the range of input voltage depends on the maximum amplitude of the sawtooth signal. For the values of the components presented in the circuit, the maximum voltage is approximately 3.7 volts. To adjust the input voltage to the required levels, we will use the second operational amplifier, which we still have in the LM358 package and assemble an inverting amplifier circuit on it. I also decided to add a small capacitance for slight integration. This way, the circuit will be insensitive to very rapid signal changes. In general, this is up to your preference. Once again, this is the final circuit we get. Let's take a breadboard and assemble it. For testing the functionality of such simple circuits, it's convenient to use breadboards. To start, you need to solder the LEDs so that they look good. I decided to solder them on the edge, cathodes on one side of the board, anodes on the other. Then we solder the ID3, the counter, and the chip on which we will assemble the generator. In my case, it's the K155LN1.
To start, I recommend assembling the generator, counter, and decoder together. Connect the transistor base to a resistor to ground, and we should see all the LEDs light up. If everything is fine, then we continue with the assembly. If not, then check if the reset lines of the counter and decoder are grounded. And if there is a clock signal at the counter's input, then carefully solder everything and check. We'll use the computer's audio output as a signal source. Turn it on, and see how the light joyfully and cheerfully jumps. For demonstration, let's add a simple amplifier and test it further. While filming this video, I came up with an idea on how to simplify the circuit. You can exclude the transistor and two resistors from the circuit, and feed the output from the operational amplifier to the reset input of the counter. In this case, the counter will reset when the condition is triggered, and only part of the LEDs will light up. An advantage of this circuit is that there will be no pause in the blinking of the LEDs. This circuit can also be modified to output two channels. But what am I talking about? This is discrete logic. The circuit can be improved endlessly. Write in the comments what ideas you have for refining the circuit. If you like the video, don't forget to support it with a like. It really helps us make more cool videos. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. And this was Andre with you. Goodbye.